this should just be one take like the vlogs in the car you know what i'm saying i shouldn't do too much editing with this one but guys what's up welcome back to the channel it's your boy dominic rich it's january 7th 2020 and it's my birthday it's my birthday so guys i appreciate every one of you in advance who saying happy birthday to me right now really 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 appreciate it and you know i'm happy to be alive to see yet another year guys i'm getting old i'm getting old i'm i'm, I'm getting very old i'm getting very old but we won't talk too much about my age though let's talk about some other players seven other footballers celebrating their birthday today and after i'm done letting you know seven other footballers celebrating today i have two birthday presents to open so that's gonna spice the video up a bit so eden hazard man the most high profile one he turns 29 today the real madrid and belgian international is one of the best players out there then we have 27 year old slovenian and atletico madrid goalkeeper jan oblak turning 27 today then we have roberto pereira of watford and argentina he turns 29 today as well then we have isaac success of nigeria and watford turning 24 today easy brown chelsea youngster on loan at luton town he turns 22 today luton town currently bottom of the championship so hmm. easy brown you need to start scoring more goals then we have Emiliano Insua, just joined, I think, LA Galaxy, former Liverpool defender. I think he's from Argentina. He turns 31 today. And last but not least, the seventh player to celebrate their birthday today. Notable player, Wayne Routledge of Swansea City. What team he played? Is he from England? I can't remember. He turns 35 today. Damn, Wayne Routledge, I didn't realize he was so old. But happy birthday to all these footballers. And happy birthday to any one of you guys watching this. Celebrating your birthday on January 7th. It's crazy, guys. Yesterday, I was at work talking to this Man United fan that I have been talking to for years. Because I met him working there. But we don't work in the same department. But we talk football all the time. And I'm like... Yo, I'm not coming to work tomorrow. And he's like, neither am I. And I'm like, what happened? What's the occasion? He's like, tomorrow's my birthday. I'm like, you gotta be, you, you're lying. Because we never really exchange birthdays and stuff. We just talk football. And I'm like, wow, no wonder we get along so well. We have the same birthday. We're both Capricorns. But guys, I have this package to open here from someone sent this to me from Croatia. And they said not to reveal their name or anything, but it, it's pretty cool though. They didn't put a return address anyway, but it's, you know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. They have the, the, the Havatska stamp and I don't know why it says Philippines here, but it came from Zagreb. So if you could see it, it's a nice, very nice package. I think I showed my address. I don't know why I keep, I always do that, but it's fine. Whatever. I'll blur that out. But let me see what's in this package here. Right now, it's some sort of clothing. And let me see what it is. Oh, it's a football jersey, huh? Hmm. Oh. Okay. So, it's a... Uh, oh, wow. So, it's something... Oh, wow. Wow, this is, this is special, guys. This is something special. This is something really, really special, man. Thank you very much. I love this. This is so meaningful. Oh my God, guys. You would never guess what this is. You would never guess what this is. This is a Champions League jersey commemorating the match between Dinamo Zagreb and Manchester City. Wow. Played at the Maximir Stadium on... 12th of november 2019 amazing 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 i absolutely love this <laughs> like what a what a present 
Thank you very much if you're watching this. Thank you very much. You said you know you want to be you know remain anonymous. I'm truly happy. I, I I love it. I love it. One of the best presents I've got for a very very long time. This means a lot. Dynamo Club. I followed last season and I still love Dynamo Zagreb and Manchester City. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. So it actually commemorates both matches. The one played at City because I was like, why is it? Over, why is Man City over here as a home team? So the both legs, both legs, and amazing, amazing. Then I'm sorry you didn't make it through to the knockout phase, but still, I, I I absolutely love this. I love it. Let me just put this on my desk over there. Oh man, I feel so good. Now let's see what my wife actually got for me. Let's see what my wife actually got for me today. Oh my God, I'm kind of, suspense is real here. My wife did go all out for Christmas, you know. She got me that nice Man City away jersey. She got me a lot of other small things, but meaningful. Okay, so what is this? It's a card, there's a card here. And there's something else here. Let, let, let's see what the card says. Let's see what the card says. You guys get a little peek into my life. You know what I'm saying? You don't get that from a lot of people. So, to the great guy I married. Look what you got with me for a wife. Bills to pay for the rest of your life. <laughs> Errands to run. Dresses to zip. Now and then... A little lip a lot of lip a lot of lip not a little lip household chores changing moods sometimes strange exotic foods it's a pop out here big pop out with the heart but through it all good times and bad you've been the best husband a gal ever had happy birthday to my one and only amazing 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 Mm -mm -mm -mm. And she said, P.S. because, mainly because you're the only husband I ever had. Wow. Love you so much. Hoping to spend many more birthdays with you. Have a great day. P.S. Liam. Love you, daddy. XOXO. Oh, my God. What a birthday. What a birthday. Oh, my God. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and by the way, guys, I, you realize I did not go to work today. I decided not to. So what is this? W what is in here? What is in here? Okay. All right. Oh, man. She's sending a message here. She's sending a message. Fitbit Inspire Fitness Tracker and Heart Rate. She's basically saying I'm overweight and I need to get myself in shape. And I, I need to. I really need to. I was looking back at some old pictures, guys, and I look so damn good comparing to how I look now. If you think I look good now, guys, oh my God, you don't want to see my pictures from 2016, 17, even from 2018. Oh man, I put on too much weight. But thank you, thank you very much, wifey. Thank you very much, anonymous Croatian donator i appreciate it i appreciate it i pray as someone on youtube i watch says okay so thank you very much for you know going through that i hope you enjoyed but let's get back to some more football here i have a nice little package put together for you and i hope you enjoy it today the african player of the year 2019 will be announced I don't know what time the ceremony starts, but it just might be a bit later. So I'm just, before I go into, I, I'm just going to check to see if it happened already. I don't think it was announced already. African player of the year. African player of the year. Any news on that? So, okay. So, mm, anything on that? Nah, nothing yet. Nothing yet. Just the nominee, Sadio Mane. Riyad Mahrez, Salah, the news isn't out yet at the time I'm making this video. So, guys, my African play of the year is no other than 
Sadio Mane, the Senegalese boogeyman. His name is Sadio, but he makes me so happy. Oh, maybe not me, but you know, if you repeat that as a Liverpool fan, as a Senegalese fan, you know, it, it might feel a little bit better, but he does not make me happy. He makes me Sadio. He makes me Sadio. And he is the best Liverpool, he's the best, not, not Liverpool, maybe he's the best Liverpool player, but he is the best Senegalese player to don the Liverpool jersey since the great, the legendary El Hadji Diouf. And other Liverpool fans might be like, ah, El Hadji Diouf was shit when he played for Liverpool. But he was the last Senegalese man to win the African Player of the Year. And guys, let me give you a little story. The first time I saw El Hadji Diouf was at the 2002 FIFA World Cup. They played the first match against France. I think they drew that game. I can't remember the result, but oh my God, my mind was blown when I saw this guy. His dribbling ability was, was top jaw, top shelf. Second to none at that World Cup. No wonder why Liverpool scooped him up, but... You know, he has an ego and him and Stevie Gerrard never got along. And, you know, when you have two big egos in the same room, they always clash. But Sadio Mane, he's not egotistical. And him and Mo Salah have worked it, you know, differences out. Remember early on in the season, that little spat? That was fun. That was fun. But things have smoothened out between the two Africans contending for the African CAF Player of the Year 2019. So I'll, I'll give it to I'll give it to Sadio Mane. I'll give it to Sadio Mane. And guys, I have something for you guys. I did promise to make you a best African eleven, but the fact that I don't watch African club football and a lot of African football, unless it's the African Cup of Nations, like I did in 2019, I decided to make a best African eleven in English football. Okay, and I'll explain. My picks, very well. The manager. The manager is Nuno Espirito Santo, who was born on the continent of Africa, on the island of Sao Tome. Someone did correct me. I thought he was born in, like, Mozambique, or one of those places, those Portuguese African countries. But he was born in Sao Tome. A lot of Portuguese players, you see the black Portuguese players, they were born in Africa, or they have African background from Angola, Mozambique, Sao Tome, Principe, and Guinea-Bissau. So, Nuno, the Wolves manager, will take charge of this team, and he has been doing a great job with Wolverhampton Wanderers, and there's no one fitter to coach this team. Up top, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, the Gabonese international, Arsenal frontman. Guys, he walks into this team. Left wing back, Sadio. He makes you so happy, oh, Marnie. He plays as a left. He's going to play as a left wing back in here. And a lot of people don't realize that Marnie does a lot of defensive work. So that's a fitting role for him. I had to change up the formation to accommodate the players I chose to put in this 11. Right wing back, Riyad Mahrez, the Algerian International African Cup of Nations winner in 2019, African Player of the Year, nominee, and down to the last three, Riyad Mahrez of Manchester City, formerly of Leicester City. He has already won two Premier League titles. He's been amazing. He's been amazing. He's my right wing back. Just behind Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is my secondary striker, Mohamed Salah of Egypt and Liverpool. He hit the Premier League by storm a few seasons ago after his transfer from AS Roma. And Chelsea are probably wishing to this day they never let him go. Along with Kevin De Bruyne too. So that's my first four players on the list. I have to make sure I have 11 and I don't put 12 players in the team. So that's my first four. Then I have seven. To, yes, I have I have 11. Just behind Obama Young, I said Mo Salah playing as a secondary striker. My creative sparks in the midfield, Wilfred Zaha of Crystal Palace, Ivory Coast International. He will be one of my creative midfielders. He haven't been so good this season, but he's still a very important man for Crystal Palace. And he's been linked to a big move away from the club, maybe to Chelsea, who knows even Arsenal. 
So Zaha has to make the 11. If you guys have your 11, please put it in the comment section down below. Don't argue with me about why I put these players in the 11 if you're not going to put one down below. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. People like to argue about things and they can't do better. Like, But guess what? I, let me put this straight. I never claim to be a, an expert at football. This is just a, a personal preference. Just remember that. Alongside Zaha will be Nicolas Pepe, also plays for the Ivory Coast international team, currently at Arsenal, still trying to find his feet in the Premier League. The man is very, very talented, and I think there's a lot more to come from Nicola Pepe. So Zaha and Pepe is in the creative midfielding role. So behind them, mopping up in front of the defense is no other than Wilfred NDD of Leicester City, and Nigeria. He has the most tackles in the Premier League, most interceptions, and come on, man. The man replaced N'Golo Kante seamlessly. Seamlessly. And he is one of the best defensive midfielders in the world. Does not get a lot of credit, but he deserves it. He makes my best African 11 in English football. Let's go back to the defense. This is where it's going to get really tricky and controversial for some because the entire defense is not Premier League players, including the goalkeeper. Do you know of any African goalkeepers playing in the Premier League? Mm, I, I think you don't. You don't. So let's get into the defense. I have three at the back. I'm playing three center backs and my goalkeeper. First center back. Julian Jean Vier, Brentford, and he plays for Guinea. Brentford are currently third, and Jean Vier has been doing a very, very good job back there, hence the reason why Brentford a third. All right? So don't argue with me. Who are you going to put in there? Eric Bailly? Cheku Kuyate? Like, come on. You, are you kidding me? Jeffrey Schlupp? You, are you kidding me? No. Julien Jean Vert. That's a little scouting for Premier League clubs watching my video right now, too. So, second center back, Semi Ayaji. He is 26 years old and he plays for West Bromwich Albion, currently second in the pre oh, not in the Premier League, but West Bromwich Albion will be in the Premier League next season. Second in the championship. He's from Nigeria and he's been capped nine times. So, that's a good choice. He was once an Arsenal youngster. So the man has quality. The man has quality. And look out for Semi Ayaji. Maybe Arsenal should buy him back because they are in need of a defender, a quality defender in their team. To complete the three-man centre-back defence is Ahmed Hegazi, the Egyptian, big, tall Egyptian who plays for West Bromwich Albion, who are currently second on the Slaven village. And I like that Ahmed Hegazi stayed with West Brom after they went down and he is currently helping them to get back to the Premier League. In the goal, I, I bet you guys are wondering who I put in the goal here. Which African player plays in English football? There's a few. There's a there's African goalkeeper, pardon me, plays in English football. There's a few. But the name I got, the name I got is Bryce Samba. He was born in Congo. But he's a French citizen. He plays for Nottingham Forest and he's their number one goalkeeper. 21 appearances this season. He has 11 clean sheets. So shout outs to the man, Bryce Samba, man. Doing big things for Nottingham Forest. Representing the black goalkeepers all around the world. Mans like Mandanda and what's his name again? Um, play, oh man. Damn, plays for Ajax. Why can't? Why is his name not coming to me though? Oh my God, Jesus Christ! I, everything was going so well in the video, and I'm like, I can't. Re why can't I remember his name? Like Cameroonian international Ajax goalkeeper. Oh my God! Like, wh why did I just get a, a a brain fart here? It's crazy, Andre Onana. Like. I'm disappointed in myself. Seriously, I'm really disappointed in myself. But guys, that's my African 11. My best African 11 currently playing in English football. 
Guys, I can't put, it's only 11 players. I didn't decide to make a bench. Just 11, keep it simple. Marnie, Salah, Obama Young, Mares, Zaha, Pepe, Ndidi, Jean Vere, Ayaji, Hegazi, and Bryce Samba. You're welcome. Okay? I delivered on my promise. Big news, big news, guys. EA has announced the FIFA 20 Team of the Year. And guys, announcement, I did not buy FIFA 20 yet. I haven't been playing FIFA 19 either. I, I, I used to go on now and again, but I decided to just hold off from the gaming because it used to just take up so much of my time. And if you're addicted to gaming, guys, I suggest you give it a break and do something more productive. It's fun. It helps relieve stress sometimes. Not if you're playing FIFA 19, because FIFA is a stressful ass game. But guys, I suggest you just have a slot during the week, whether it's two days or three days a week. And be between that slot, you just go and play for maybe two hours max and then get off. Don't waste your time playing games. Seriously, it, it's very unproductive and it, it just makes you feel bogged down and stressed out most of the time. But I, I don't play games. I might buy FIFA 20 when it comes down to like 30 bucks or something. That's the only time I'll buy it. But I'm not going to waste my money on like FIFA points and all that stuff. Like it, it's a waste. Plus the game is scripted and all of that. I, I'm not in. I, I'm really not into frustrating myself like that. I destroyed one of my controllers playing FIFA 19. So it's now my son's Liam's toy. He plays with that. But yeah, let's react to FIFA 20's team of the year. Okay, so Marnie. So you heard me right, Marnie. Marnie is in it, and and pay close attention. Marnie is in it. I don't see no Riyad Mahrez. I don't see no Mo Salah. Mane plays fourth for the Ballon d'Or. Above Mo Salah, above Riyad Mahrez. So tell me why Mane won't win the African Footballer of the Year award. Tell me. Tell me. Because he didn't win the African Cup of Nations. Like, he has to win it. He has to win it. It's a must. It's his. It's his for the taking. Riyad Mahrez has one. Salah has one. Let him take one. Let the boogeyman have one. Okay? He deserves it. He's been scoring some wicked goals. It's his best Premier League season for Liverpool. It's one of his best seasons ever. He's He's been amazing. Got to be honest with that one. So, Marnie, left wing, Mbappe as the striker, Messi, right wing. I, I agree with those three. Come on. You can't deny it. You can't deny that. And Golo Kante, Frankie de Jong, and Kevin De Bruyne in the middle the Kante thing is kind of questionable, to be honest, because since, you know, the Sari and the, the Lampard role is kind of weird, he's playing more advanced, so he hasn't really been at his best and he's been injured, so it's kind of questionable that they put N'Golo Kante in here. Maybe a, a guy like Casimiro would have been a better choice. He's been doing big things in La Liga this season. So the Kante inclusion is kind of questionable, in my opinion. They just, I think they just put Kante in there on reputation alone. De Young had a great 2019. De Bruyne, guys, he's been amazing. No debate in that. And it seems like he's the only Man City player on this list. Tier. Then left back, Andy Robertson. Guys, he's been the best left back in the world in 2019. Let's see if he could continue that into 2020. No debates there. Matthias Delict had a great year for Ajax. Not so much for Juventus. Ah, I guess he deserves it. I guess he deserves it. But I, I do think if Emmerich Laporte stayed fit, if he stayed fit in the back end of 2019, he would have been here alongside Virgil van Dijk, who I... I have no questions about being in this team. He, he should be the first man on the list. And there's another Liverpool player. There's actually two more Liverpool players on here. So Liverpool dominates FIFA 20 team of the year. This should be the title of this video. I know Nathan Heaver said the last 11 videos I made had Liverpool in the title. Guys, it's a strategy. It's a content strategy. I put Liverpool in the title. 
the video does well. I can't be wasting my time putting out a video, putting Man City in the title and getting 500, 600 views for my time. Views equal subscribers, views equal watch time, which equals dollars and cents, which equals peas and pence. So come on, come on. You got to be smart on YouTube. You can't be out here like a jackass, you know, grinding, being a starving artist. You, you got you to gotta look out for yourself too. So Nathan Heaver, stop questioning my strategies, okay? I'm not, this is not a Manchester City channel. This is a football channel. I'm going to say it once again. So if I make 100 videos in a row about Liverpool, it does not mean that I'm a Liverpool fan. It just means I'm doing my thing. I'm being smart, okay? Most of the times, the video ain't even about, like, maybe like three minutes of the video is about Liverpool, but I have to put something as a title, and that's very, very clever, and it's it's real, and it's nothing's wrong with that. What, what am I going to put as a title? Something about Crystal Palace? Something about Bournemouth? Or Sheffield? Like, come on. Maybe that's why some of you guys have channels and they're not doing well because you don't know what you're doing. Okay? But anyways, enough with that rant. I need to wrap this video up anyway. So, Trent Alexander-Arnold, the best right back in the world according to FIFA 20. And I think he is. Alisson makes the goalkeeper. And I, I can't debate that. He's been winning all the goalkeeping awards. So, Liverpool dominates... EA's FIFA 20 team of the year, a fitting title, and I think they've been the best team of 2019. They won the Club World Cup, meaning that they're world champions. They won the damn Champions League, meaning that they're European champions, and they're currently on top of the Premier League, meaning that they're currently champions of England. The only thing can stop Liverpool from winning the Premier League this season if, is if World War Three happens and just ends the football season across the world and you, you know including Europe that's the only reason Liverpool are gonna not win the English Premier League this season or if they capitulate of course those two reasons but yeah I think that's one classic I came up I came up with that one I and I figure I'll put it down before someone else steals it or someone else mentioned it. Maybe someone else already did because they say no idea is original. So, Ronaldo does not make the team. No Ronaldo, no Lewandowski, no Raheem Sterling, no Mo Salah, no Harry Kane, no Timu Puki. Yes, I said it, no Timu Puki. The man single-handedly helped Norwich City get promoted to the Premier League and single-handedly took Finland to their first ever major international tournament in Euro 20. There's no party without Timu Pukki. Simply put. Do not debate that. Let's move on. <laughs> Let us move on. I'm still on the front page. I'm still at, But I'll, I'll run through the, the rest of this. Though. I'll run through the rest of this. Not a lot of stuff left to talk about. That'll take up my time. I'll run through the rest of this. So stay tuned. Gotta reset this camera. In some interesting footballing news, Daniele De Rossi retires from football. The Roma legend cut short his stint at Argentine club Boca Juniors, stating he wants to be closer to his daughter. Hmm, family. Let's just say that. He just made four league appearances, six in total, for Boca Juniors, retiring with six months left on his contract. You breached the contract, bro. You breached it. Having turned out for Boca, he barely missed out on being a rare one club man. Like you played for Roma all your life. You team, senior career, and you go to play for Boca Junior six times and, and just tarnish your whole thing. You could have been a one club man. And these, these are rare these days. You know what I'm saying? For AS Roma... He made 616 appearances and won two Italian Cups, so he never won a Scudetto. Shame, man. It's a shame. Maybe he was seeking a league trophy in Argentina, but he, you know, maybe he's not happy down there and he just decided to cut it short. 
So can't blame the man. You can't blame the man. He missed his family and he decided to go back, go back home. So you can't blame him. You can't blame him. So he he had a, 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 a hundred and seventeen caps for you know, I'm recording on the computer right now and the thing is like going to sleep. I don't know why it's doing that. I need to reset that. I need to change the settings on that. But he has 117 caps for Italy, but he was capped 117 times for Italy and he was part of the squad that won the 2006 FIFA World Cup. Happy retirement, Danielli. You were good. You were good. A legend. A legend. But you should have stayed at Roma. Should have stayed there. FA Cup fourth round draw was made yesterday. No big ties. I'm I'm truly disappointed. Truly disappointed. We drew Fulham. Liverpool have Bristol City or Shrewsbury. And the Liverpool kids are going to take care of business. All the other matchups were, were, were doo-doo. I, I, I really... I'm, I'm really disappointed in the draw. I would have actually... Love to see some more marquee matches. But then again, guys, it's only the round of 32. Let's weed out 16 more teams and then we might get some big matchups. I need to drink some water right now. But the FA Cup fourth round draw, it, it was it was garbage. Let's all agree with that. Next up, Ciro Immobile. Chiro Immobile. So next up, Chiro Immobile has scored 19 Serie A goals in 17 appearances this season. Five more than the player currently in second with 14, Romelu Lukaku, formerly of Manchester United. So this is actually four goals more than Chiro Immobile scored all last season where he bagged 15 in 36 Serie A appearances. That was quite poor. His best haul is a 29-goal haul in the 2017-18 season where Lazio finished 5th on 72 points and barely missed out on UCL football. Lazio haven't been in the Champions League for quite a while, but it looks like they're poised to make the cut. Let me keep my fingers crossed on Lazio for next season because they're currently on 39 points, 6 points adrift off second place Juventus and first place Inter. I don't know if Juventus passed Inter, but both both teams are on 45 points. Inter Milan are doing their thing, man. Latoro Martinez and Lukaku, they've been one of the most deadliest pairs in Europe this season. So, shout outs to the big man Stormzy over there ripping up the Serie A. Did I say, did I say Lukaku or did I say Stormzy? But the man the man the man is doing well over there. He's doing well. He's doing very, very well. But too bad Inter did not make the round of 16 of the Champions League. Don't know how. Don't know how they didn't make it. But guys, I have an interesting one for you here. Transfer or transfers of the day. And this is something you would have never, ever expected. I'll be reading from my piece of paper right now. 24-year-old Norwegian international midfielder Mats Mola Daly Moves from Bundesliga to club FC St. Pauli to KRC Genk in the Belgian first division for 2.5 million euros. St. Pauli only paid 600k. Somebody say profit. Somebody please say profit. Not profit. Profit. Somebody say profit. He has already been capped 23 times by Norway. He debuted at 18 years old back in 2013. He has 18 appearances this season for St. Pauli. One goal and eight assists. Eight assists. So the man is really creative. Could this mean, guys? Could this mean? Could this mean that his fellow Norwegian and highly rated midfielder, Sander Berge. I, I, I don't know if that's how you say his name. is Sander Berge or Sander Berge. Is on the way out. Does this mean that Sander Berge is on the way out? Advenko, remember when I asked you to, to, to list a few players you want to see in the Premier League and you listed Sander Berge? I was like, who is this guy? This guy is highly rated. I, um, everyone is talking about him. So he could be on the way out. Maybe he's coming to the Premier League. Maybe he's not. But Berge is rated at 22 million euros and Genk won't hesitate to sell because we know Genk love to... 
excuse me. We know Genk loves to sell. They will sell. Mats Moller Daly is a former Man United youth player and has Premier League experience with Cardiff City back in the season when Man City won the league two points ahead of Liverpool, who came in second. Heartbreak, right? Right, Liverpool fans? Two points behind, one point behind last season. Now you guys going to, you know, you guys, you guys have to win it this season. You know that, right? But, but, but the reason why I'm saying that Sander Berge is going to leave Genk. Genk also signed another Norwegian youngster. It's, it's insane. It's insane. Genk also signed 20-year-old Norwegian midfielder Christian Torsvet, who made the Norwegian Elitisarian team of the season. Well, there's two different teams of the season awarded by the two top newspapers in Norway, and one of them had Mr. Christian Torsvet in the team. He had 10 goals and 3 assists in the 2019 Elitisarian where Viking FK placed fifth as a newly promoted team. Big round of applause to Viking FK, man. <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to make this football segment I'm doing here, the vlogs, I'm trying to make it real informative and I want to make it the best vlog in the world, on the entire planet, in the universe. And note I said vlog. It's a vlog. You know what I mean? I just have fun. I'm relaxed. There's no pressure whatsoever. There's no pressure. You know what I mean? There's no teleprompter in front of me. I'm reading and I'm trying to be fat. No, there's no pressure here. It's for you to relax and see what it is to, to be normal. Character. Charisma. Everything is going to be in the, you know, humor. Everything is going to be in the vlog. Something a lot of people are lacking out there on YouTube. And I'm not throwing no shots at anyone, though. Disclaimer, not throwing shots. But Viking FK promoted last season. Well, they have 2019 season. Then 2020. It's not. It doesn't go over into the new year, which is pretty cool. And maybe because of the harsh winters up there, too. Then, guys, I want you to predict where Sander Berger will move to. Or Sander Burge. I say he's going to move to Germany, somewhere in the Bundesliga, and I'm going to say RB Leipzig. That would help him develop. He's still very young and maybe 21 years old right now. He's a, he's a defensive midfielder, and he could play as a deep-lying, creative midfielder. And I, I think, I think Sander Berger is on the way out, and he's going to be in Germany. If he comes to the Premier League, I'll be happy too, but I'm going to say Germany. Another, another transfer from the Norwegian Elitisarian. While doing the research, I found another gem, guys. Norwegian Player of the Year. Well, Norwegian Elitisarian Player of the Year. I don't even know if I'm saying that thing right. The name of their league. Elitisarian. It's because of sponsorship reasons, I think. Norwegian Elitisarian Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year. So he won both awards. He's 19. Hakan Evjen. Hakan Evjen. He joins AZ Alkmaar in the Dutch Eredivisie from 2019 Norwegian Elitisarian runners up Bodo Glimt for 2.5 million euros. He is currently 19, as I said earlier, and plays as a central midfielder. In 29 league appearances, he scored 13 times and provided 6 assists. So he was involved in 19 goals, the reason for his team coming in second. And that's a vast improvement from only two goal contributions the previous season. So in 2018, the man was only involved in two goals and he went up to, to 19. So it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So let's just give him the award for the most improved player in the Norwegian Elitisarian for the year 2019 as well. All the best at AZ Alkmaar. I hope to see you playing in the Premier League, Bundesliga, even Syria or La Liga one day. You never know. You never know. Seems like a very, very, very good talent. Guys, big news. Big news. Ghana Football Association fires coaching staff of 
all national teams like they just wiped out everybody like they, they just doing a big overhaul over there and they just saying listen everybody fired we hiring some new people maybe some old people will come back too if they you know know the right people but the new fa president kurt okraka well he have okra in his name let's see if he can you know not be as slimy as the previous regime Get it? Okra, slimy for the slow ones. And Mr. Okraka, Mr. Okraku, promises a better organization following allegations of bribery and corruption. Ghana, under Kwesi Apia, the now ousted coach, failed to qualify for the 2018 World Cup after making the tournament in the last three editions, 2006, 2010, where, you know, there was a whole Suarez incident Ghana did really good at that World Cup. Could have possibly be the first African nation to win the thing. But we all know what happened. Asamoah Jayan missing that penalty. And let's not get into that. And they were at 2014. But missed 2018. And at the last African Cup of Nations, they got knocked out in the second round. Their worst performance in the tournament since 2006. So they needed a change. And change has come. Let's just all agree that the Black Stars are going through a very, very dark age in terms of their football. The talent isn't coming through like before. I know they have Thomas Partey, the RU brothers, and a few more up-and-coming players, but Ghana has declined. Let's leave it at that. And last but not least, before I wrap up today's segment, the video has been long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Adama Traore reveals that NFL clubs was in for him back when he used to play for Barcelona, according to his teammate, Roman Saiz. Adama, who is enjoying one of his most fruitful seasons of his career, scoring goals left, right and center, providing assists. He looks muscular and strong, like a, a beast. He looks like a leviathan. The man is just so powerful. He's so powerful, man. And he claims that he don't, he does not lift weights. He just have a very rigorous workout. And that's the reason why he's so big and powerful and strong and muscular. But Adama Traore has been very impressive this season. And after his impressiveness, after being so impressive, after being such an impressive person, player for Wolves this season he has been linked back with a move to Barcelona he's even said he would play for Real Madrid he's been linked to Man City I've seen articles saying he's been linked to Man City he's been linked to Liverpool guys do you think Adama Traore would cut it at one of these top clubs let me know in your comment section down below let me know in your comment. This is my comment section. Let me know in my comment section down below. I would love to see Adama Traore at one of those bigger clubs, but I don't know if he would actually cut it. But it would be exciting to see a move like that. But I, I, I suggest Adama Traore stay at Wolves. Guys, that's where I wrap it up. Today's my birthday. I have a, a lot more videos I want to make. Maybe not. I don't know. I'll see what it... Let's, I'll see what happens. I'll see what happens. But... 40 minutes in guys 40 minutes in i don't know how long i could keep your attention so i have to end it now sorry for the people who love to watch long videos but it ends now it ends now i'll be back tomorrow with the morning vlog i have to get you know preparing and everything for the vlog tomorrow it's good to prepare it's good to prepare that way if you fail to prepare prepare to fail so prepare so guys, I'm your boy Dominic Rich. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to wish me happy birthday. If you're new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the thumbs up button. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you never visit cardsplug.com, guys, check it out. Lovely cards. If you decide to buy one, use the coupon code Dominic Rich FC to get yourself 15% off. So from your boy, your big birthday boy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, peace out. Rich Squad.